honors and four conference titles. And Rosen and the Cougars are coming off a 22 and 12 season that saw the team receive an NIT bid for the second straight season. And the 2017-18 team, which has the goal of returning to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015, includes 10 players with, with experience playing at BYU, three of whom have received WCC honors, five players with starting experience, three transfers, and one true freshman. Coach Rose. All right, thanks, Kyle. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. I'm excited to, to be here and get started on a, another season. We're, uh, uh, we just finished our, uh, our final workout for the week and uh, look forward to getting started with official practice on Monday. Um, I think that uh, we've tried for the last couple seasons um, to, to go back 42 days from the opening tip and with the, the rotation of us taking Sunday off every week, um, it, it just seemed like uh, it was kind of cut up. So we kind of took the, f the first few days off, and, and now we'll start this thing on Monday, which is, um, I think, 35 days before our first game. And we've got five Sundays in there. So uh, we'll be going five days, six days, I mean, five weeks, six days a week. So we're excited to do that and get started. Our guys have had basically 13 weeks of uh, conditioning, weight training, and a couple hours a week with the coaches uh, with the eight summer uh, summer semester, eight week session, and then the last five weeks since school has started. And in that time, I think we've, uh, we've got a lot accomplished and uh, we've found a lot out about our group, but I, I think that uh, uh, Monday we can really start putting groups together to see the, uh, who, who, can, who can play together and uh, what will be our best teams and be our best groups on the floor. It's a mix of a lot of guys. I got a good group returning from last year uh, with that experience, uh, you know, right fresh on their mind. Um, I got a group coming off missions uh, that have all played, all had pretty good success uh, here before they left. And three of those guys returning off missions played on NCAA t tournament teams, which I think is really Im important for the experience of our team and our group. Um, and then we've got uh, three newcomers um, in uh, Jashir and, and uh, KB and, and Ryland that they're, they're, you know, first semester on campus. Uh, and then some, you know, other guys that are uh, returning from last year that didn't play a lot that are looking to kind of improve their their role on the team. So uh, that's kind of the group that we have. I think that the, the, the there's no question the, the, the goal for this group is to get back to the NCAA tournament. Um, in the 12 years as a head coach, this is the first that we've experienced back-to-back -back years without going. And uh, these guys have worked hard. I think they've kept their head down. They've, they've got a, a goal in sight. And uh, and so far, we're, we're in pretty good condition. I think our guys are in great shape. Coach Shork has done a, a tremendous job with them as far as conditioning and, and building their bodies. We've got a lot of work to do to get them in game shape and get them ready to, uh, you know, to play uh, a 40-minute game. But uh, the competition comes quick. Um, you know, we're, we, that first weekend, we got a, a home game, and then we go out to Princeton, which uh, will be one of our, our tougher preseason games, and we come – right back to play a team that beat us in our place last year with most of their guys returning in UT Arlington. So uh, we've got to be good early, we've got to be good in the middle, and we've got to be great late. So that's kind of our goal, and that's what we're looking forward to. Um, I'm excited about the, uh, the returning guys who, you know, have, have you know, kind of put themselves um, in that elite position as far as um, all league, you know, uh, citations and Yoli and – and TJ and uh, and Nick, uh, but but also I think Elijah has got uh, you know great potential and and has really overcome some um, some tough injury problems and is playing really playing great right now. And so uh, those four guys will probably be the, the the core of our group to get this started. But I'm excited to see the rest of the the guys and how they fit in and go from there. So um, with that. Being said, I'll, I'll uh, leave it up to, to questions, and we'll go from there. Anybody got any questions for me? 
Yeah. Aaron Falk with the Salt Lake Tribune. Wondering, big picture with this FBI thing, if you have any thoughts or hopes on how this might, you know, impact recruiting or, or the NCAA rules in general? Well, in general, um, my thoughts are that uh, the, the system's probably a pretty good system if we all followed it. And uh, uh, the problem seems to be that we've got a, a you know, few situations where it's not being followed and people are trying to, make, to maybe take shortcuts. And, and, uh, and so now people are talking about maybe redoing this whole system. We, we went through this as coaches about five or six years ago and presented a, a, a plan that's different than the plan we're on right now to the presidents and they voted it down where the, the recruiting would go through um, most of the high school coaches in the summer and the AAU would kind of take a back seat to that and, and that was voted down. So this is the model that we've been given and, and for me, I, I think that instead of trying to reinvent everything, let's all just adhere to it and follow the rules. Some schools have, have uh, started internal reviews. Do you feel the need to do that here or anything like that? I've had co a couple conversations with uh, Tom, and, and, and we've discussed our recruits and individually how we've got to, gone about offering scholarships and uh, tuition books, fees, and room and board are, seem to be the, the norm. Associated Press, uh, what kind of growth do you hope to see from TJ and Nick specifically? Well, I, I think that uh, with TJ, I, I, I just it, it's so it's so hard to not play a couple years and then come in and start playing. And what he did last year was tremendous, as what Nick did two years ago. Um, the most important part for him is to build on that. Uh, and I think that the time that he spent in the gym and the time that we've spent together as a group, that uh, it's, it's a learning process for him just developing his game and being able to feel more comfortable out there. I think he's, he's always going to have kind of a frail, uh, slight type of body, but I think he's been able to learn how he can play with that and be really effective at this level. I think Lee has really helped him. Lee Kamard is a guy who, who played a different position, but played with kind of a, a, a slight body, but really had strength in how he played. And I think those are a couple of things that, that TJ's really spent some time on this summer. Nick, I think the most important thing for Nick is uh, confidence. You know, he, he we got to get him in a position that he's really comfortable with. He needs to have the ball in his hand a little bit more than he had it in his hand last year. Defensively, he needs to be a little bit more focused. And those are all things that have been real trigger points for him. Uh, you know, in, in the off season, and, and he is, uh, especially the last two or three weeks, has just been terrific in his improvement. So looking forward to getting those two guys back out there again. Dave, uh, Jay Drew, Salt Lake Tribune. How much will losing uh, Eric and also Kyle Davis affect the way you play offensively? How, how, much, how will that change the style? Well, I think there's two things. One is... The, the fact that you were missing a couple of really good low post scores, okay? But the second thing is, is that we, we've made a real commitment to uh, becoming a, a, a better half court offensive team. And so you're gonna see a lot of changes just because of that. And uh, I think that there'll be a lot more space on the floor uh, just because of the personnel. A lot of the, the guys that are playing in the, the so-called four spot are perimeter guys with, with, I mean, you know, skilled guys with with perimeter skills that can go out and stretch the floor and get more, sp you know, have more space for or the guards to, uh, you know, to play in. I think you'll see a lot more pick and roll, uh, and our, our players will be able to read it and ball getting from side to side. A lot more continuity with players reading instead of maybe a quick call from the bench that's a quick hitter that ends up in a shot, you know, in the first five or six seconds in the shot clock and. Uh, and I, I think that we'll, be, we'll do a much better job in the half court being able to um, kind of make decisions by based on how the defense is playing us. And that's, that's what I think you'll really see as far as our offense is concerned. Follow up to that, how will Yoli's role change? Well, Yoli spent a lot of time on his ability to, to be able to space the floor. And uh, I think that uh, you know, we can get him in the high post and we can get him in the short corner. Uh, we get him at the three-point line, uh, stretch the defense a little bit, and be able to bring guys out away from the basket. Um, his role will really change on the defensive end because 
he was a good rebounder last year. He's going to have to be a great rebounder this year. We'll, we'll, we'll really spend, I mean, put a lot of emphasis on him being able to, uh, to control the defensive boards, the offensive boards. He'll get a lot of help from Elijah this year, which we didn't get a lot from last year. Elijah kind of played, you know, uh, where he wasn't 100%. And, and when, when you see the difference, it's pretty impressive. And, and uh, he, he's a really athletic kid with big, strong body that will help us rebound. And then, of course, Peyton and Luke and Braden and, you know, those, those guys will have to – really carry a big load. But we've always been a good rebounding team as far as our guards are concerned. So hopefully our guards will be really involved in, in that area of the game too. Zach Laney, the Valley 360. What are the chances that we'll see a four guard in the lineup this year? Well, I, you know, I think everybody is so intrigued with that because that's, you know, kind of how the NBA is going and how the Warriors play and the Warriors won a couple championships and then when you play the Warriors, it seems like the other teams all do that to try to match up with them. And I think that'll be an option for us. I don't think that'll be our main, uh, uh, you know, core uh, group. Will be four small guys and a and a big guy in there. But we, I think we have the ability uh, with some of our our mid-sized guys to be able with Dalton and Zach and uh, and Yoli and, and and some of those guys to be able to spread the floor and create more space for our guards to be able to work in. But you'll probably see a little bit of it, yeah. Darnell Dixon, the Daily Herald. Dave, what do you attribute um, as far as improvement with the team to being able to use the facility, the, the practice facility, the entire summer? Well, I, the most important thing is consistency, and, and, and that's what I love. I, I'm kind of a creature of habit, and it's hard for, for just the – I think the the feel of uh, your improvement to be in one facility one day and a weight room one day and another weight room the next day and another facility and the, and the fact that we uh, can can control it and be the time that's available for the students, not trying to schedule it and then make the students kind of cram their day into that. Uh, I think that's been a you know a real advantage for them. But I, I just I, I believe the fact that. It's all in one building is is a you know is, is a, a kind of a uh, a benefit as as far as just convenience is concerned, but the fact that they can get in there anytime on their own and and use that facility is 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 probably what you know makes it really special, and and those guys they spend a lot of time in and what I, I I think I said this before but I'm really proud of this group to this point because of a really disappointing end to last season. Where we got beat twice, really got licked, you know, pretty good both both games, which doesn't happen very often over the course of, you know, the last ten years, and that these guys kind of put their head down and have really worked. And I think when you see them come in, you'll see their bodies, you'll see the uh, the determination. But this has been a focused group to this point, and that's one of the reasons I'm really excited to to get going with them on Monday to. Uh, one, get them in game shape so we can get ready for this uh, Cougar tip-off, which comes in a couple weeks, and then a couple exhibition games, and then get started on the 11. How do you feel this non-conference slate this year compares to your past non-conference schedules? Well, I think they're similar uh, as far as um, the challenge that we'll have with each game. Uh, the names of the, of the team seem to be – uh, maybe not as attractive as they have at some some years, but when you look at the RPIs or potential RPIs of this team of, of the, the the games we're playing, the majority of these guys are projected to finish in the top hundred somewhere with a, a few top fifties, and so uh, it's a challenging schedule. And the travel is what we'll really um, you know we'll see. We 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 we've got a um, a trip back east, and we come home play a couple games, and we go straight back out. To, you know, to to Brooklyn, and, and and hopefully we can re, we can play well in that stretch, and then recover from it, and play well when we get back, and then we come right back to all the in-state games, which are always kind of dog fights. So, looking forward to it. Yeah. Sean Walker from KSL. Is it a little weird this year where so much of your guys' experience is kind of return missionaries coming back from NCAA tournament teams and whatnot that you kind of touched on before? Is that a little bit different maybe? And what have you seen from some of those guys for the summer, I guess? 
Well, it, it's an interesting mix, okay? Uh, but I like the fact that 10 of these guys have competed here. They know what it's like. They know what it feels like. They know what's going to happen and how it feels in January. And they, and they know what's going to happen when we get to February. And the grind that that league is, that league schedule is. Uh, and so that, that, that's uh, encouraging that they, you, you have that. I think the, the, the most important thing, though, this group has been able to, for the most part, stay healthy and very few missed days. For any guys now, now Ryan Andrus is the, the exception. Now he he uh, you know hurt himself a, a week or so ago, and his knees having some problems swelling and things, swelling and things, and so he had a procedure done on it. And hopefully we get him back in a couple of weeks. But other than that, I mean, it's been a and last year we had all kind of issues. At this point right now, we had I think three of our top five guards that weren't even going to be able to practice with us for you know the first three or four weeks, and so. Um, from that from that that perspective, uh, I, I think I'm I'm really optimistic about what we can get done in the next few few weeks to prepare us for our opener. Yeah. Brandon Gurney, Desert News. Uh, a couple new faces in Hardnet and then Brown. Can you discuss what what, what kind of players they are and maybe the expectations? Well, I, I think that uh, the two things that were the most important factors for us uh, in the spring to improve our team was. One, we wanted to become a better half-court offensive team. We've always been a very good transition team. We've been good at out-of-bounds underscoring. We've been good at getting to the free-throw line and scoring. Our transition game has always been really effective and one of the best in the country. Uh, our half-court game has been a, 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 a pretty quick hitters that uh, uh, I just wanted to improve on and, and get our, our guys reading more. And then instead of having calls from the bench, we'll um, have more reading, reading the defense and resp respond to that. And then the second thing was to actually eliminate three-point attempts. So we had to be, become better a three-point defensive team. Teams didn't shoot a very good percentage against us, but they shot so many of them that uh, the math just killed us in a lot of games. They were shooting so many and making so many that we, they, they were making threes and we're making twos, and by the end of the game, we couldn't catch them. And so we have to get better at defending that shot and not, not challenging it and contesting it but actually eliminating it, and that will be that, that'll be an interesting for us. I mean, we're going to play uh, Princeton, who's one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, and we'll shoot volume threes. Then we'll play UT Arlington, who that's a real weapon for them. And you know, so we're going to see a lot of these teams early. But we know that in our league, especially, uh, it's uh, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, or leagues in the country. So. Um, when we when we decided that that needed to be a real emphasis, we felt like we just needed to get a couple of real long athletic guys. Now Deshier is a little short, quick, fast guy that's always caused us problems. So we're going to have him in practice every single day to be able to guard against that. So I think we'll be able to be a little better defensively against those kind of players. Um, and then in, you know also uh, um, with Ryland and with KB, I think their length and their athleticism will help improve us. Uh, from that on that three-point line, but that's just not what we've done. I mean, we've actually changed the scheme of how we of how we uh, kind of rotate and defend uh, to get to that line, and hopefully, you know, it'll pay dividends for us. Yeah. Jason Shepard, BYU TV. What has the addition of Coach Schroyer meant to your staff early on, and and what do you hope that means as the season progresses? Well, Heath and I, we've been friends for a long time. We coached together for four years uh, here on the staff, and then the last 16 years we've uh, kept in touch at least every month. But, uh, you know, at, at, in, in some periods during that, we, t we talked every week. Uh, it, it's fun to have Heath around. With that being said, uh, it's kind of interesting not to have Terry around. You know, I, I, this is the first – fall that I've been the head coach at BYU without Terry on our, on our staff and uh, you know he's uh, he's got a, a tremendous personality and a, a great competitor and was just fun to be around and so I really kind of miss having him around but but Heath is one of those guys that brings a lot of energy to the office he's a 24-7 guy he's a basketball guy with you know connections all over the United States and you know overseas and uh, and so that the newness of Heath, I think, has really created a lot of energy in our office. 
probably as good a place as any, but we, you know, we've kind of reorganized our staff a little bit, and Heath is the associate head coach, and Tim will be the uh, assistant head coach, and then Quincy is our uh, assistant coach, and then uh, Andrew Mazur, director of uh, basketball operations, and Lee Kamard, who's a real addition to our staff as a graduate assistant, is in his second year. I didn't know if we'd get him back for his second year, but he's finishing his his master's program, and so we've got Lee for another year. And, and that group of guys will be uh, a great group to work with. I think that Heath's um, he's very similar to, to the, the guy he was, um, you know, 20 years ago when we first got here together. And he's got a lot of energy, he's got a lot of knowledge. He's got a real attention to detail and a, a real special way to connect with the guys. And uh, uh, I think that when you, if you want to talk to the guys about that connection, I think they'll all talk about it because it's – it's pretty unique and pretty special, and I think it's really helping us right now. With no seniors on the roster, where will the leadership come from from this group? Yeah, that, that's, that's a really good question. And uh, right now it's kind of, uh, you know, we're all involved in this. And these returning guys that just, you know, played last season and have got this, you know, memory of, uh, you know, of, of a disappointing end to the season – and then you got these return missionaries who have all played on, uh, who played on you know a tournament team, uh, and understand their role. And, and you know with Luke, Luke, Luke's coming home with after playing for two years and starting here in both of those seasons. And so there's some leadership in that. Ex I mean, there's some experience where that leadership's going to have to come from, and where it really rises up. You know, we'll, it'll, you'll probably see that in the next five or six weeks, and then we'll we'll name the captains and, and hopefully get. A lot of leadership from our captain, but I, I think this experienced group of six, seven, or eight guys is where it really, really needs to come from. Coach, there's been a phrase, Greg Rubel, BYU Athletics. There's been a phrase, maybe about Golden State, about playing positionless basketball. Does that phrase resonate with you? And does your lineup have the kind of versatility where you could see multiple guys doing multiple things for you? Well, I, I think that's the, you know, that's the goal for us is to be able to get the ball in guys' hands who can make plays and give them an opportunity to make all the plays instead of just specific plays from a certain position. And when you take just that group of guards and go with Jasheer and, uh, and with Nick and TJ and Elijah and Ryland, I mean, these are guys who can all put the ball on the floor. They can all, you know, for the most part, are pretty good shooters. I wouldn't say that any of them are non-shooters. Uh, and then you have a couple great shooters in there. Um, but, but kids don't want to just be shooters anymore. Kids want to be, you know, they want to be playmakers and they want to be guards. And, and that's, that's kind of a, a big thing with us right now is just make basketball plays, make smart basketball plays. When you get involved in a, a pick and roll, you can't predetermine what you're going to do before you see what the defense does. And, and hopefully we can play this game offensively where no matter what the defense does, it's wrong. Because if they go under, then we got an option. If they go over, they got an option. If they try to squeeze us, or try, whatever they try to do to us, that we can read it and then play from it. I think that'll make us a lot better, especially late in the season, which uh, is, you know, I mean, we played one of our best games late in the year, but uh, to finish the way we finished was really disappointing, and, and, and hopefully that that this year will be way better late in the year. All right, thank you very much. Look forward to it.